Oh, well, Dwight Evans parked a couple homers, the Sox won, and by day's end, poor Ben had become one of God's most pathetic creatures, a Red Sox fan. And that's where the story begins. Careful, kid. They'll break your heart. You two gotta be there to keep this thing going. And they went, and lo and behold... Back to full. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. And that night, there was a blue moon and a total eclipse. And those are the facts. Oh, one more thing. You know that little player to be named later? Ben says if it's a boy, they'll name him Ted Williams Wright. If it's a girl, Carla Yastrzemski Wrightman. Let's all pray for a boy. That's right. We're diving into one of the great sports rom-coms of all time it's actually the third sports rom-com we've done if you count those nicks clips no yeah, no the first two no those don't count <laughs> this is rom-com rewind which we're going to get into in just a moment here on mackie and judd after we thank some of the people and businesses that keep us and the lights on and by the way you're asking for ways to support us score north app is one way download and consume our content there but also support our sponsors like Whamatech. If you're listening or watching on a broken down phone, tablet, or laptop, maybe it's time to break down and get a new one. You don't have to break the bank. Whamatech is a trusted supplier of pre-owned cell phones, tablets, and laptops, and they have your back. Whether it's a buy, a trade-in, a sell, they will save you money on a pre-owned device. Uh, they'll even buy your old device for cash. That's whamatech.com, W-A-M-A-T-E-K.com. And also Federated Mutual Insurance Company, Federated is here helping business owners just as they have been for the last hundred years. And they recently launched My Shield, the online client destination for risk management resources. As a business owner, how helpful would it be for you to have employee training at your fingertips? Industry resources that can help your business reach another level of success. That's where My Shield comes in. Frontline protection. Find out more at federatedinsurance.com or download the app. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. If you thought these guys spent every waking hour of their lives doing manly things like watching sports while yelling at their TVs, shaving with straight razors, and revving their V8 truck engines, well, yeah, think again. It's time for Mackie and Judd to turn in their man cars. This is Rom-Com Rewind. Obviously, this is very manly. Not the time, it's she doesn't respect how I'm spending my time. You know, now, now she expects me to miss a Yankees game? <laughs> Let's go, Murph, you're up. All right, Mr. Reitman, I got a bat. Let me just leave you with this thought. You love the Sox, but have they ever loved you back? Who are you, Dr. Phil? Get out of here. Go, go ahead, go <laughs> swing the bat. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, the 2005 classic, Fever Pitch. Starring Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Fallon, like the peak of his SNL powers here. Yeah. too. I want to talk about Jimmy Fallon later. We will definitely talk about <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> I'm excited. So this is Rom-Com Rewind. This is, I think, the third ever installment of Rom-Com Rewind. We're yeah. on a little, little run here of we're going from action movie rewind to Rom-Com Rewind by popular request and demand. Here's the summary of Fever Pitch. When Ben Reitman, played by Jimmy Fallon, a young teacher begins dating a pretty businesswoman, Lindsay Meeks, played by Drew Barrymore. The two don't seem to have a lot of the same interests, but they fall in love regardless. Their romance goes well until baseball season begins, and Lindsay soon realizes that Ben is completely obsessed with the Red Sox. Though she tries to understand Ben's passionate team loyalty, eventually it threatens to end their otherwise happy relationship. This movie generated a 65% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics' consensus on Rotten Tomatoes said this. While not a home run, Fever, mm -hmm. Fever Pitch has enough charm and on-screen chemistry between the two leads to make it a solid hit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Kind of a failure at the box office. $30 million spent, $50 million return. Ooh. I saw it in I, the theater, really? I saw it twice in theaters. Whoa! Twice! Whoa. Yeah, what's it? Wait, Whoa. wait, wait. You told me you saw it in the theater once. No, I saw it twice. Different. I saw this movie twice in theaters. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yes. I saw the twice in theaters. That is amazing. Wh why? Uh, this was like peak of my baseball interest. And I also, at the time, really liked Jimmy Fallon. Now could not be less true. I can't stand him. But Dude, you could actually argue that this, we can get into this, but like this might have been the peak of baseball. Like baseball yeah, man. was still huge in 2005. Yeah. 
I this was peak fandom. MVP Baseball 2004. I, it's one of my favorite video games of all time. Okay. I saw it with my buddy Luke the first time, and I think I saw it with my mom the second. I love it. Good dude. for you, I saw man. It twice in theaters. I love it. So Declan's all in on this movie. This movie was directed by the Farrelly brothers. Yeah, you might I, remember their I run. I forgot that they directed this one, and from, I love them. They are great. A, a very successful book, correct, about a soccer team? I the, believe. He, I'm sorry? I believe this is based on... The concept of this film is based on a very successful book that was about a soccer team oh, in Europe. I thought you were talking about the Farley brothers, and I was like, no, oh, no, I, no. The, I think they bought. Brothers. I think <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't a book. I, I believe they bought the rights to the idea for the script from. Okay. Yeah, because I think Don read the book at the time, and it was pretty good. But it well, was about a guy that loved a soccer team. Well, by this point, the Farley brothers could do pretty much whatever they wanted because they had already in, oh, the, yeah. in the ten years leading up to this, Dumb and Dumber. Yep. There, uh, this is a combination of directing and producing. Dumb and Dumber, Kingpin, There's Something About Mary, Me, Myself, and Irene, yep. and Shallow Hal, and Stuck on You. So some corny ones in there, but oh, I love Stuck on You. Me, Myself, and Irene, legit one of the most underrated comedies of the late 90s, early 2000s. I think, and I think Stuck on You is. I know that one. <laughs> some people are split on that. I think that's like one of the funniest flipping movies of all time. I don't know why. They also they made a big comeback with Green Book in 2018, yeah. too, the Fairley Brothers. Nick Hornsby is the author of the 1992 got book it. Fever Pitch, which got is about it. soccer. Okay. So that's where they got the idea. Cool. So let's start with Judd Zolga. What was your key takeaway from Fever Pitch? I actually am shocked that it didn't do well at the box office overall because my key takeaway is this. It's a love story that worked pretty damn hard to get until the, the end, which we'll discuss. But... Uh, it's a love story that worked hard to get the baseball part right, and I thought worked did something that is difficult for rom-coms to do, which is I thought it would be appealing to both guys and gals, and so I assumed that this would have been in some ways a perfect date film because like it works both ways. It, it's a fun film. It's not great, but it's. It certainly doesn't suck. It did hook guys, like you, for sure, you know, because it's kind of a base. Yeah. It's about like your baseball. But, I mean, bros. Dawn went to see it and she liked it too. Yeah, because it it certainly had an, enough rom com uh, background as well to hook people. So I am surprised. But my main takeaway is it's not great. It's really good, and, and I did thankfully, I did think that they worked very hard until the last part to do the baseball right. Like we didn't get the Nixon King shot in one day at the garden and call it the NBA finals. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, th these guys actually had footage celebrate. I remember watching the celebration after too. they beat the Cardinals and in Fallon sweep. and Drew Barrymore. So I was like, why film? are Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore um, out there? And, it's and, weird. Are and they making out? I believe the story. I believe the story was th that this film had been shot with the premise that the Red Sox didn't win the world series. That's correct. And they had to go back at the end and like refilm and by the way, this film could easily have been about the Minnesota Vikings. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it could. Like, this could be about the Vikings. Continue on that path. Yeah. Okay. So Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. Yeah, but I mean, the they, Vikings. They, they meet in the Twin Cities somewhere, and she realizes, oh, my God, he's, like, going to training camp with and horns and face exactly. paint. Exactly. Yeah, you'd have to face He's paint. part of the Viking World Order. Yes. He leads the Viking World Order. And his the, friends are in the skull chant, like, yes. or just in the skull line. The skull line with yeah. the, the snare drums. Yeah. And, yeah. and <laughs> the, the Vikings, like, like the Sox, <laughs> are good. So yeah. it's not like this, well, they suck. They're good. And what do they do? Break, Break your, heart. your heart. Yeah. And then so she would she would jump down, you know, one of the railings or something at US Bank uh, well, Stadium yeah, in the well, NFC championship game. Or she wouldn't jump off the railing and that'd be fine too. But yeah. we'll I digress. Declan. Uh before I get to my main lead, Uncle Carl in the first two minutes of this movie is Judd Zolgad. Oh, he's Uncle Carl he's been in a Judd ton Zolgad of stuff. Vibes. I love him. Yeah. Just like, do I have to change him? For God's sake, Carl, me. he's seven. Yeah. You, you don't got to change him. <laughs> he was in Rescue Me. <laughs> yeah. He's great. Just like there was a lot. I know like the first, I haven't seen it. So I've seen it twice in theaters, but I have probably haven't seen this in like probably 10 years. Like yeah, I don't think too. I've seen it since like college or any time since then. So I saw it in 05. That was it. It's been a long time, but my main takeaway, and you could call this maybe selfish here, but I relate to Ben very much in this movie. I feel like this was almost kind of like watching my life in a rom-com <laughs> So you're, movie. you're trying to live your life 
And, and if a gal fits into it, she fits into it. If not, then yeah, quit telling me how to live my life. Quit telling me how to live my life. But you're on like twins towels and stuff, right? Not towels, but I have an obs- unhealthy <laughs> obsession with the baseball team that, you that causes a, me. Have you ever held a draft for tickets? No, I have not. The season ticket draft was pretty aggressive. That is pretty absurd. I sort of liked it. Though, I need to see know? some Yankee dancing. Right. Yankee dancing. <laughs> Uh, I do sympathize being somewhat like he's got like this kind of low income job, but it gives him the summers off. So he's able to still watch all his baseball games. He's also pursuing a woman way out of his league. Who's like high up in corporate respect that game. 100%. And, uh, I just, I really, I don't know, maybe because I, because I saw this as a kid I didn't I didn't obviously put those two and two together, but they're both in their late twenties. They're trying to figure out their lives. They have their warts, warts, despite like being mostly good people. I identified with Ben. It felt like I was watching my life play out in a rom-com sports movie. Amazing. Yeah, I can <laughs> I can see this for sure. I can see this for sure. So my main takeaway is that I forgot how distractingly bad Jimmy Fallon is as an actor. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, dude. he's good in his little SNL role. And you know what? I don't even mind. I don't mind him in late nights. I haven't been able to watch him much the last couple of years because I think I find it more entertaining you know, I I like to watch. It almost seemed like he he ignored what was happening around the country the last couple of years too much for me, and so oh, I think I he did. Yes, I yes. haven't watched and his ratings fell because of that. But he's, he's but he's pretty good for the most part in in that realm. Two hours of Jimmy Fallon on screen, yes. just him being Jimmy Jim, Jim Fallon dropping a little. Oh, hey, buddy, yeah, we love you, buddy. Yeah, yeah buddy. no, no, I'm in the. Uh, oh, look you. at me, I'm in the. I'm in the. What was it called? The barrel. You uh, throw me over the edge uh, of my barrel. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I don't know. There's That's, just a certain. Annoyance factor. At the time, it didn't bu- bug me because I hadn't seen him that much back in 2005. But watching it now, I agree completely with you. Yeah, like it's just it's too much. It's a lot, and he's and always she, sort of fidgety. Lot, he's too. so fidgety. It's like okay, she, yes, and she, she's a lot too. You're she right. plays the same damsel mm-hmm. in every single movie. Yeah, yes. so she's good at it. But you're right. Yep. Yes, literally plays the but same she can, damsel. But I feel like she can act, and he really just can't act. Well, I think it looks like she can act more than she can because yeah. she's acting next to Jimmy but Fallon. But yeah, right. Yeah. But I mean, he's True. he cannot act. <laughs> like he was literally told, "Be the SNL guy," but you like baseball now. Yep. Okay. All right, Joe. What was your favorite part of this movie? Um. Okay. Th- th- this is gonna sound trite, and and it's gonna sound sort of schmaltzy. But my favorite part was this: when Ben explains his love of baseball to her. It is dead on. He said, I get lost in the game, the people, the ballpark, the smells. Yeah. If you've ever been to an outdoor ballpark and you love baseball, yeah. whoever wrote that knew exactly what they, that was not some stooge just trying to be like, I'm going to write something. That was somebody who loved baseball. I loved that explanation and it's dead on. And if you don't love baseball, you can't identify with that at all. This movie romanticizes about baseball in a way that I don't think you could today. Like I don't I don't think the way the way that this movie deifies and romanticizes about the vibe of baseball and the tradition and the history of baseball and the and the importance of baseball, I don't think it exists today in that way for people. I feel like in Boston you still could, but yeah, to a national audience, I'm not sure it works. It's hard. A- and in addition, yeah. You had in 2005, you had the Red Sox 86 year streak, or I guess 04, because this movie came out in 05, but 04 was when they broke the, the curse. You had an 86 year Red Sox curse, and you had a 100 year Cubs curse that was about to hit the, the century mark. So you had these two crazy long futility streaks for two of the most prominent franchises and big market franchises in the game. Yeah, which were great. And, and those things were sort of woven into the thread of multiple generations of baseball fans, these underdog franchises. And when those two things got taken away, it was, it was great. Like at some point they had to be, but once you played those cards, if you're baseball, it's like, all right, well, yeah, what's next? Okay. Well, Cleveland well, hasn't won a World Series since yeah. 48. Well, nobody gives a damn. Right. Oh, the twins. It's been about I mean, 30 years. The, the, the Cubs would be the other one. You could do a spinoff of this. Oh yeah. It'd be, the, it'd be the Cubs 10 years later. So, yeah, but yeah, you're right that I don't think you can do this right now in 2021 with the current state of baseball. Yeah, no. What, what was your favorite part, Dex? Uh, my favorite part is that they waste no time getting right into the relationship. Like usually, you know, there's always like some some subtle takes like 30 to 40 minutes before they meet, and there's backstories of their past. The literally the movie opens within 30 seconds, they meet each other, which is kind of cool. And then he asks her out 
She turns him down. She consults with friends. He's all torn up because, like, oh, what the hell? I'm, I'm a school teacher. I'm Judy Fallon. I don't know what to do. Uh, she doesn't like me. Oh, I guess. Uh, well, uh, screw her. I'm just like the Red Sox. Uh, you know? That's, that's Jimmy Fallon. It's so true. That's really that's, good. That's Jimmy Fallon. That's really good. So I love that I love they waste no time. Her friends convince her to go out with them. We have that clip, too, or, or uh, explaining what's wrong with them. Uh, yeah, let's play that real quick. Go for it. You're right. I'm an idiot. I'm about to turn 2010, and the dating market is, shall we say, bearish. And instead of becoming more open and available, I'm becoming less open. Maybe you should date a different kind of guy. Why? What do you mean? Well, all the guys you date are sharp and competitive and successful. It's like you're dating yourself. Ding, ding, ding. What, what's wrong with the school teacher? Wrong well, with the radio producer. He's a school teacher, which means he has a small income. Bingo. <laughs> um, but I, I love how quickly they just start going out. And then it's this little progression of the seasons. And I, I like that they just waste no... Usually these rom-coms take a little while before they like you get into it. And this one, they waste no time. Within 10 minutes, they're basically on their first date. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Get right to the point. I think my favorite part was actually... I, Judd already mentioned it, so we won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But I love that they wove they wove sports in or they weaved sports into this movie in a in a smart believable way. Like th- this movie had a chance to be super corny from a sports perspective because yeah. of just how much in general if you're going to make a rom-com and involve a lot of sports, I would say don't. <laughs> don't because you're probably going to screw it up cuz it's not the Knicks and Kings in the final. <laughs> right. But they took mostly reality-based storylines. Yep. I love. I really love the scene where the it, it, it hit close to home. I think for a lot of fans, when they're down 0-3 in the American League Championship Series, and they're all four sitting at the bar, depressed and drinking, and Trot Nixon, Jason Veritek, and Johnny Damon are all getting dinner at a table, just like you know, right fifty feet from the bar or whatever. And and the conversation of those guys don't really look like they're disappointed. How can they not like? How can they not be depressed right now? Yeah. And then they right. and then they go through the discussion about Jimmy Fallon's kind of realizing, well, maybe that's the right way to think about it. Maybe we sh- maybe you can love your team but not have it envelop your entire life and into where you're, you know, you're you can't even like operate the next day. And I I love that part cuz it, it is so true. It's like it's the I think sports fans battle like Vikings fans, for instance, they've never paid it off for you, right? 60 years of Vikings football. They've never once Do the Vikings paid it love off you for back. You. A little kid asked that I, I don't know if the Vikings love you back, but if you can like put back. a little bit of emotional distance, just a little bit, yep. so where you're not like ruined on a Monday, I think well that's written. the healthiest way to be a sports fan. Right. So, all right, your least favorite part, Judd. All right, so I'm I'm not going to divulge what truly is that because it's going to be in the next category, but okay. I'm going to give you my least favorite part. Just as far as as I know that they wanted to write this scene to get to where they felt that they had to go. I think I know. You're going. But come on, so Ben misses one Red Sox game, oh. <laughs> one Red Sox game, and I don't know how long. It's a Yankees game, which he never misses, right? And it turns out to be the greatest game in Fenway Park history. And they score eight, and the Sox score Sox score eight runs in the bottom of the ninth to come back for an 8-7 win, and that happens to be the game, and he is in bed with her, and then she goes out to cook something, to, and uh, he turns on the TV, and there's live reports from Fenway Park, and his buddies are calling him, you missed the greatest game in history, and that was the first thing that I thought was just like a true stretch. Like I like I thought it was a bit over the top that they went to it's the greatest game ever for the Red Sox and you missed it. I thought it was a stretch that his relationship basically ended yes. because of that game. Like yes. yeah, well, he that just too. has this amazing night with yeah. his with his potential future wife, and he flips on the game or the highlights and the and like yeah, you'd be a little bit like oh my god, but, I can't believe I missed that game. But would it, but would you le- would would you go from that feeling to? And I'm going to let it ruin my relationship well, right we're now. We're done. We're over. But we're what gone. I don't get about that then is, is if that was going to be the case and it's a Yankees game, it would have to be more than a costume party. Like I'm telling her, I, I ain't going to your costume. I don't care how much you like me. I'm not going to your uh, costume party for a Yankees. I I mean, was, this was after the Paris thing though, right? And he, I think he had already yes. said, he, he, yeah, had, he yeah. had a strike against him. Yeah, he so had a strike. He's yeah. down on the count. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but, but I mean, come on. She knows. He told her, 
I, I just felt the whole, that scene was the first scene that I thought was just, because to me, what, what I, I liked about this film is it was cute, but it was sort of realistic in a lot of things. And then it's just like this whole thing. And then Phil, you're right. It's just going to be done now because of that. Actually, I want to ask I'm a question, a question within the question here off what I'm Judd just brought up. In general, in this movie, the themes are Ben is a huge Red Sox fan and he and he wants to continue doing his Red Sox obsession thing and also wants to have his cake and like he wants to he wants to be married at some point. And he's taking her to games constantly yeah, to but, try and keep but, her happy. But he wants to fit her into like, oh, you're gonna come to Red Sox yeah. games with me, right? Yeah. And she's like, No, we should go to Paris and like you need to you need to have a better closet, you need to grow up and you need to be more of an adult and I want you to take the passion you have for the Red Sox and channel it into more adult things. Yep. Who was more right? Oh. Ben or Lindsay? Lindsay. I think it's Lindsay. It's Lindsay. Um, look, it's, it's Lindsay. It, it's Lindsay. You have, you, you have to be an adult. Judd? The life that he led, and he was, what, near 30? Yeah. Um, I feel like he had chosen his path. I think they were both wrong. <laughs> And they tried to make it look right because that's his life, man. I mean, his house was nothing but Red Sox stuff. Like she can't come in there and just basically be like, it's all changing now if that's his life. And he has no right. But here, so, so where I think it in real life, where I think it falls apart completely is the Paris thing. Because he's like, well, the Mariners are in town, which a guy might say. But at that point in time, do you really think it's going to continue? And by the way, the Mariners. I will say this. The Mariners. I might skip the Mariners game, but I ain't on a dime going to leave on a Friday for Paris and come back on Monday or Sunday. Was, I think that they were going to leave Thursday okay. and then come back. So, yeah, that, no. that's a little I, bit of a short term. Although they are, they are in Boston. It's like a four. It's like okay. a five hour flight. But what right? I'm saying is I'm out right there. By the way, the Mariners in 2004 were awful. 63 and 99. Okay. Their best hitter <laughs> was Brett Boone at the time. Nice. Remember Brett Boone? Oh, yeah. Remember Twins him. He's a legend. Yeah, I was going to say, we picked him up. I mean, picked he, him up, I put guess, him at second base. I guess Ichiro was their best hitter then. Okay. And Edgar Martinez is on the team. But they, they were like a 100 loss team. But are you going to Paris on a Thursday to come back on a Sunday? That's I, not, that's I, not, that's I'd not. Want, my I'd life. want the extra day. I'd want yeah, the extra day. I need the extra I'm day. I'm just not going to Paris. Yeah. See you later. Ever? You don't want to go to Paris ever? By Lens. Uh, I'd have to go for like two weeks. Well, yeah, I think, but, uh, that's, but that's I'm going to, but I mean, she was going to like, I'm going to take you on a business trip. <laughs> and by the way, she knew that the whole socks thing, like she knew exactly. And she's just going to take him to Paris. Oh, it's going to be a surprise. And then she was going to tell him that she's pregnant. Like, this is where I start to have some problems. And then he was excited that she'd be pregnant, but they were dating. Name me the last guy who's excited <laughs> that his girlfriend, like, it's fine if you're going to get married, but like, we just started dating and I might love you. I'm not quite sure. And you're going to drop the, I'm, I I might be pregnant bomb. And I'm like, I'm going to go buy some baby clothes, Red Sox, baby clothes. Perfect segue. Cause that's my least favorite part of this no. movie. The whole, the whole Sorry. I'm late pregnancy thing. They like try to hint at it. And then she like calls him from Paris and he has like the Red Sox onesies in his dresser. <laughs> it was just completely unnecessary. Yeah. Like it, it, it wasn't necessary at all. And I, it was, it was uncomfortable. Like I was yeah. uncomfortable watching that like three minutes. Cause it was from, your life and you would hate that. I and you should. I don't believe had a pregnancy scare. No, but, but I'm saying, but I'm saying if you identified with him, yeah, then that whole scene would, would scare you. Yeah. And you would certainly not be like, but I bought a twins onesie. Yeah, no, I would not. I'd be freaking out. And my siblings would be so upset with me that they'd be angry that I would be in that situation. Well, that's another good segue <laughs> into my least favorite part of this movie, because I feel like our friend Ben did a lot of unrealistic over the top things, <laughs> including on their first date when he shows up at her door and she's got food poisoning and she's like deathly ill and uh -huh. looks pale as a ghost. And instead of him saying, oh, like we barely know each other. Why don't you rest? And then. I'll just call you tomorrow and see how you're doing. He stays overnight, stays overnight at her place. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And in the process, he takes care of her, which is very nice. He cleans her whole place, brushes her dog's teeth with her toothbrush, by the way, for sure. Yeah. With an electric toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's just like, there still in the morning. How many, like, again, they don't know each other right. at all That's at this not, point. Yes. They don't know each other. Yes. And she would be if, like, if you you're a woman, wouldn't you think this is weird? Also, yeah. she allowed him to take her clothes off and like dress her up. 
like pull off the shirt yeah. and put a nightgown on. That that's they the don't most know each realistic other. part. Yeah. I think the fact that you're going yeah. to stay in her apartment and like start cleaning it up. I, I think it's, it's, it's is that something a person would want from someone they don't know? It's creepy. I personally would not have wanted that if I just met someone. I'd say, listen, I'm gonna let me grind this out myself. Get out. We'll, we'll text tomorrow. <laughs> I would have just, but but wouldn't you call? Grind like this out. I wouldn't let you show up at my door if I'm puking my guts out with food poisoning. I'm texting you, and or calling you. I guess in 2005, and saying, "Hey, that's I can't. not a good point." How did he shows up at the door and she's like, "He doesn't have a cell phone." That's true. He doesn't, he doesn't have, have a cell phone. Yeah, but he's got a home phone. But she probably, he probably doesn't have that even. I don't know. Maybe. I think yeah, no, he no. Did, he, he had the baseball phone. That's right. It's got a baseball mitt phone. But I think what he did was admirable. I think I would have done some of those things. I would not have stayed overnight. Dude, the staying overnight is that, weird. That part's the weirdest but, part. But I would you have cleaned up her bathroom? I probably would have. Like, she's blowing chunks. I'm not cleaning I that up. I probably would have. If I really liked the woman. First if date. I really liked her. First date. I think I would. If I really liked her. And I, and I felt that. Yeah, I would. If it was the right person, yes. You know, you you stick with those instincts. I will, and I will I'm report not doing back it. <laughs> after the first when I get ghosted again on the first date. I will report back that that I did not clean up puke at her place. I don't think if if I started to date a girl and she came to my place and I'm blowing chunks, I don't think I want her to be cleaning up my bathroom. Like I'll yeah, no one needs to I'll see towel, what's happening in my bathroom. I'll towel it down what you myself need. later. Also, food poisoning. There's what? definitely there's definitely things firing out of both ends. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's no one way. Yeah, she didn't really have a, a a a a true case of good old fashioned food poisoning, yeah. right? Cuz yeah. you're right. Oh, man. It, yeah. It's both ends. Yeah. All right. I mean, so it's a good weight loss product. Real quick cuz I feel like we have a ton of categories for these rom-coms. So we we have cheesiest part and least oh, believable. Yeah. Do you guys want to get rid of one of those or keep them both? I think we can combine them for this one. I can combine both together okay. easily. I have, I have a least believable. I don't have a cheesy. Let's just let's just get yeah, rid of yeah. cheesiest. It's cheesy part. though too. Okay. Well, sure, that works. So the least, least believable part least, is cheesy. Least believable part, Judd. Okay, the least believable part is the end of this film. <laughs> All right. So she, so Lindsay, spoiler alert, is being promoted at her job and they come to the bar to get her because she's out with friends or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you got to come back. You're getting the promotion. So first of all, I'm supposed to believe that she doesn't know that the promotion is going to be announced and she just happens to be, have left the office. And then they're like, where's Lindsay? There's a promotion for her. <laughs> okay. Then it gets worse. Then Ben is selling his season tickets, but he's taken the guy to the Red Sox game, which is a playoff game. To sell him the tickets. To, so they're going to sign all of the papers there. Like you would, if you were going to do this transaction, you would do it in an office. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it at the game. Oh, okay. So this is all like sketchy, but I, yeah. I'll he, buy it. He also had like a total of probably 10 minutes where his pen was hovering over the signature part. Yes. You know, what? I'll buy it. But then she finds out that Ben, my Ben, my Ben, who, by the way, you broke up with. He's not your Ben. My Ben is going to yeah, sell. You were on a date with another guy when he showed up at your place. Is selling his his tickets. Home and, and so she takes, <laughs> so she hightails it to Fenway. And for a playoff game in the eighth inning, pays 600 bucks to get in. But she can only go in through center field. And this is where I get confused. It's not believable and it's not necessary. So they, they have to make it that she's going to drop. And by the way, have you guys been there? Fenway yeah, Park? This is a massive drop. She's going. Oh, my God. You'd die, right? Well, yeah. You you wouldn't get up. You'd break <laughs> your leg. Didn't she have high heels on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You'd snap your ankles. And she hits the warning track. Yourself. She hits the, and they show her, and she's like, her back is all arched. And then she just like gets up and starts to run. And Very she, slowly. And, yeah. And she makes the it running. through security. And then security allows her to talk to Ben outside the Red Sox dugout during a playoff. Just game. give me one second. I, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it's why, but, but here's my question. Why? Like, you could have done a lot of these things. Like, she could have stopped him, okay, without all of what I just gave you. Like, and it still would have been sweet. Why did she have to hoist herself off the center field wall at Fenway Park? Because he didn't have a cell phone. But why? He's selling his Red Sox tickets for me. Oh. What have I ever given up for anybody that meant that much? Nothing. I'm sorry. I know this seems crazy, but I got to go. <laughs> You realize you're selling your seats for exactly the same price they sold Babe Ruth for. You said it yourself. Relationships come and go, but the Red Sox are forever. I want my sponges back. <laughs> Would you be selling these tickets if we were winning? I bet you wouldn't. We're never winning. That's the point. We're down three games to nothing. It's 4-3. They got Rivera warming up in the bullpen. Look, 
if I keep these seats, all I'll think about every time I'm here is, is what I gave up for them. By the way, Babe Ruth sold for $125,000 on January 5th, 1920, which was a lot of money back in That's 1920. a lot of dough. So he's, you see him sell those tickets for $125,000. Yep. Yeah, but why would you? Oh, and anyway. So is that like a... Is that like a one-time fee? And then the other guy has to pay the actual ticket payments every yes, year? Yes, yes. Think- Dude, and, and then because and the guy says, I'll take you to some games. Sure. So he was going to sell the rights to the seats, and then the guy was going to buy the tickets from the Red Sox from then on out. And that's, that, that's exactly Miley's favorite part, uh. is the schmucks that are dating her friends. The least believable? No way those guys like baseball. Oh, the husband! Uh, zero, the, zero. They're the chance. husbands, yeah. The guy with that beard and well, here's my whiskey sample. Why don't you give us a gear and like? No way that guy enjoys. Who even knows <laughs> Trot Nixon? Zero <laughs> chance that guy knows Trot Nixon or or anyone on the Red Sox of that that season. I can't stand those dudes because I also and I know people do this because you could come from work. I have a vendetta against people in suits and high end attire at a baseball game. It drives me insane. I mean, it was like mandatory a hundred years ago. Everybody, all the guys right. wore their yeah. derby hats. top hats and their I, suits. If I'm standing in line, balls. paying twelve dollars for a Budweiser or a Corona Hard Seltzer, I don't want to stand next to suit Tom behind me, also trying to get a cocktail at a baseball game, dude. Go I, somewhere else. I feel like people, and especially especially men, must have just been sweating all the time. For centuries leading up to like the last 50 years. And women years. would dress up too. Yeah, they're all like, Back like in these the day. thick dresses and stuff. Yeah. All right, so that was your least believable part? Yes. All right. My, so my least believable part, I think, is actually more of a least favorite blend here. Mm-hmm. It's when she keeps answering her phone while they're on a date. And she's even talking about like, a lot of guys just hate whenever the guys I've dated just hate when I answer my phone when I'm on a date. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, hold on a second. Let me answer it again. Like, Dude, like if you if if I'm on a first date with you or a second date with you and it's our time to get to know each other, if you answer your phone and it's not an emergency, it's over. Like you're that self-centered that you can't engage in this conversation. I can see like glancing at a text or something, but this is our time to have a connection. So that drove me nuts. Um all right, what what other things? I have a couple of, I have a, another question for you guys I actually. Have two things that really bug me or or were at least weird. All right. The first one is when she goes to that spree of games and he takes her. One is he had distributed his tickets in a lottery system to take his friends, and now she's just going constantly. So, like, did did we just forget <laughs> our friends? Well, he he said he said he saved some good games for her. Yeah, but she's there all the time in the film for a while, and then she gets hit by a foul ball. Oh, if God. you got drilled that close by a foul yeah, ball, you'd be dead. And you'd be bleeding. <laughs> you would be dead. And you'd be bleeding like a stuck pig, right? Like yeah, you'd be sure. bleeding oh, up a, a storm. Instead, she gets hit, knocked out cold. They supposedly rush her to the hospital. And then that night, she's at home with a bag of peas on her head. And he's trying to have sex with her. Yeah, he like this is not how concussions would work. She goes, Ben, I'm concussed, and he goes, I like it that way. I don't have a lot of weight anymore. But like she's like she's like lucid. She's like (laughs) she just got hit in the head by a foul ball from how far away. Like you would be bleeding. You would need stitches. You would probably be kept in the hospital. Like your eye might be knocked out. Like people have died because of this. This is a big deal. Uh, Let's talk about waiting. Doesn't doesn't make me want to wait anymore. (laughs) God. It's so true. I'll never forget the worst I've ever seen someone get smoked like up close. And it wasn't even like close to the field. It was in the Legends Club of all places. So I was covering a Twins game like eight years ago in the press box. And there was a woman sitting in the Legends Club sort of down the first baseline. Like, I would say, I don't know, mostly behind the plate, but like shaded toward the first baseline. And she's on her phone. And she's got a twins hat and she's got white jeans on. And someone hit one of those like high oh, backspin, no. like, you know, sometimes you can follow the ball back and, and it's sti- got some hum on it. And the oh, stitches yeah. are coming. Yep. And so someone hit a foul ball like off the barrel, straight back. Oh. And she's looking down and the ball hit her like either hit her on the brim or hit her like under the brim on the nose or something. You're bleeding. She didn't even see it coming. Everybody else was like, oh, here's the ball. And she's just on her phone and bam, right in her face. White jeans, blood pouring everywhere, ah. just disgusting. Like they had yeah. to. She was like half unconscious, and but that's what I'm oh. saying. But so you wouldn't just take the ball off the noggin and go home and get it on. Yeah, well, Ben. Yeah, Ben likes to do that. 
apparently with concussion. But she's like, you know, but then I'm concussed, but I'm I'm fine. <laughs> what was the other thing you had? Oh, what was it? Yeah, keep going. Here's my I next. Forget. Here's my next question for yeah. you. I'll I'll figure it out. So Ben is obsessed with the Red Sox. What's the most obsessed you guys have ever been with either a team or something else? Like, have you guys ever been as into something as Ben was into the Red Sox, even for like a year in your life? North Stars probably when I was a kid, though, like I was fourteen or thirteen mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, I I loved them, but and I love sports still. But I don't think I could ever be that into a team like that. But like that is like a kid. No. Yeah. And if you have like Red Sox sheets and a baseball phone, which is sort of cool, um, it's a little, it's a little weird. But I but I don't I don't think I have the ability. I was pretty you? in on the 09 Vikes. I mean, I was 17 then. So yeah, that's was, perfect that, age. That's a perfect age to be like impressionable. I love the 06 Twins. I love the 2010 Twins. But I don't know if it was ever to the point of like what Ben was doing. I was, I was probably this obsessed with Attitude Era WWE. Yeah, like I even as like a twelve year old. So this would have been like yeah, like right when the like eleven years old, twelve years old, like ninety seven when the Attitude Era was starting. I had like wrestling figurines that I would still, yep. and I would like draw blood on them and stuff, and hold awesome. like cage matches and stuff. Oh yeah, and all of my friends were into it, and we would make our parents. Buy tickets to the house shows and the pay per views that would come through town, Absolutely. and we'd make signs. At, at that age, it's, per- oh, it's perfect, though. Yeah, it was. But I mean, he's almost thirty years old, and he's yeah. still he's got the Red Sox sheets. By the way, shout out uh, at the very beginning of the movie, little sports radio love Dennis and Callahan on Weei was playing oh, on the man. radio. Yes, in their car, It'd be kind of fun at some point if yes. the Mackie and Judd show would be playing in the car of a movie. That'd be nice when the Twins win a playoff game. We get a Declan's rom com, and we can just be great. Go from there. Yeah, production notes on this one. The original plot had assumed the Red Sox would lose in the playoffs. However, the Sox stunned the baseball world when they won four straight games <laughs> to win the 4 ALCS against the Yankees. Um, the ending had to be rewritten. On the day of game four, with the Red Sox on the verge of a sweep, the Fairleys decided to bring Barrymore, Fallon, and a film crew to St. Louis hours before the first pitch. Barrymore and Fallon attended, attended the game at Bush Stadium in character. When the Red Sox made the final out, to score a 3 nothing win over the Cardinals that broke the curse. Fox cameras on the live broadcast caught Barrymore and Fallon running onto the field and kissing to celebrate. The film, with its updated ending, was also screened at Fenway Park the following August as a screen was set up in center field. So, All right, definitive relationship rankings. All right. So far, we've done two other rom-coms. We've done Hitch. So Hitch and Sarah came in at an 8.8 on a 1 through 10 scale. Chemistry, on-screen chemistry is what we're going for here. Ben Barry and Andy Anderson from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days scored an 8.3. So a couple good good chemistry pairings there. We're looking for a score, 1 through 10, chemistry on screen between Ben and Lindsay. Hmm. Or I should say chemistry between the characters. Like Right, which is actually pretty good in this one. Um, they're both weird. Yeah. I'm going to give them um, I'm gonna give him a 7. Okay. okay. I'm going to go with a 6. Like I, they're there. Like they're they're good. They're not bad, but I can't stand. Like, look, I used to really like Jimmy Fallon as an eleven year old. <laughs> I've grown up. I couldn't stand him as squirrely little nature. I, I, I look and Drew Barrymore plays that same role the entire or entire movie history. So it's a six for me. Yeah, it's a seven for me, dog. That's fair. It's a seven. Like, part of the problem is Jimmy Fallon is so weird and uncomfortable. Oh, buddy. There's just it's not believable that a woman would fall obsessively in love with him. The Red Sox part is. Yes, the Red like Sox the part geek is Like the baseball part is totally a, a buy-in. But yeah, and like at some point in time, wouldn't she just be like, uh, you know what, dude, you just don't do it for me. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. And well, plus, who was the dude that was holding her dog when he answered the door? Like that super good-looking oh, guy, guy from work? Yeah, he's the guy from work. Oh, he he's the guy who was, who she's sleeping at her desk, yeah, because that's right. She'd been out with Ben, yeah, that guy, and he was doing something with her boss, and then yeah, he that was, guy would have that guy would have had a probably would have had a little six month run with her at some point there. Yeah, yeah Jimmy Fallon, Summer. Ben, Ben would have been a threat to that one. So seven to seven to six, that, that brings the score to a six point seven, ranking it third or last so far. And now we get to the overall rating for the movie, one through ten. Criteria is just straight up entertainment value for you guys. Hitch scored a nine. And How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days scored an 8.8. So we'll start with Judd. 
I'm torn here because it's a cute film. <laughs> I like it. I, I really like the baseball. Um, so there was a lot to like, but there's something about it that just seemed, I can't get too excited. I'm going to give it a six. I, I gave it a seven. It's an enjoyable film. Like it, it, it's it's a good movie. Yeah. But Judd brings a good point that at, there's nothing about that like screams over the top and and puts it on the same level as Hitch and or even How to Lose a Guy. So it's it's a seven. It's a seven out of ten. Yeah, I'm kind of with you guys. Like it's fine. I definitely don't feel like I need an hour and forty minutes of my life back. It was great. It's a seven or it's a. I'm sorry. It's a six for me. I gave it a six. Okay. And part of my reason for giving it a six is because. I just can't stand the celebration of Boston sports throughout this movie. Oh, wow. I understand. Yeah, I mean, it makes like, sense. Like, come now. on. You know, 16 years later, it's like, gag me, for God's sakes, but with the, the celebration those, of Boston sports. The Super Bowl ads pregame of all those Boston people, you know, like, so salty over time. You're salty? You're, you're upset that Tom Brady's in Tampa Bay? You guys have won everything in yeah. the last 10 years. Go. I, I can't say what I want to say, but yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, no. Can't stand it. Who should have played Ben? So, oh, so like if, if you could go back and recast that now, because I do Mc, think McConaughey. <laughs> I'm all red, right, all right, all right, all right. I'm Red, Red Sox. Sox. Go Red Sox. Red Sox through and through. She yeah, would, right. uh, she would not have had a problem with McConaughey. Um, Mark Wahlberg. I'm trying to think of Boston uh, guys. So I, I just did like highest grossing stars of 2005. So number one was Keanu Reeves. Oh my God! Is it Keanu playing? I love the Red Sox. <laughs> Red Sox um, are great. Will, oh, Will, Matt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Will Ferrell. Orlando Bloom. Uh, what else we got? Uh, ben Stiller, Johnny Depp, Vince Vaughn. I, Vince Vaughn probably could have done this, I think. I would have been fine with Vince Vaughn and Drew Barrymore. I would, I would enjoy that. Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey, Will Smith, and then Brad Pitt round out the top 10. Will Ferrell or Sandler to me? Damon, right? Is I that, was going to say Matt Damon. If you're thinking like people associated with Boston, yeah, right? no, Matt yeah. Damon, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Be kind of funny. Matt All Damon. right, so with that, with us uh, giving those scores, it's a 6.3 composite score. Making it the third out of three movies we reviewed. Hitch, a nine. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, 8.8. And Fever Pitch, a 6.3. Well, since we we brought this up on the show earlier in the week, since the next time we do a rom-com rewind, I will be living in Seattle, Washington. This is probably the best time oh. to do Sleepless in Seattle. Perfect, yeah. Let's Little Tom it. Hanks, Absolutely. Meg Ryan. Let's do it. I've never seen it. Whoa. Never seen it. Here's the cool thing, all right? I would say 90% not intentional. The place that we're going to be living in is a half mile from the boathouse oh, that was in Seattle. Really? <laughs> 90% unintentional. Nice. 10%. No, oh, it's, ah, it's pretty close. Cool. Cool. Uh, maybe I can be Greg Ryan, Tom Hanks. Be great. So Sleepless in Seattle next week. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap on Rom-Com Rewind here. There's something you don't know about me. The thing is, uh, I am a Red Sox fan. Yeah? No, I'm, I'm like a big, big Red Sox fan. I know. I mean, I've been to your apartment, seen the Red Sox dish towels and glasses and the Yankee toilet paper. It's like you live in a gift shop. 